Hello and welcome back to my Astro Imaging Journey channel. Uh, this is the prelude to what I'm guessing is going to be episode 50 at the time of this recording. Uh, a complete walkthrough of my updated workflow and processing based on the Light Vortex Astronomy uh, tutorial that's up there. Uh, as I said in a previous video, I had uh, contacted Chiron, and uh, he gave me permission to uh, record these videos uh, using his tutorial. I mean, it is his intellectual property, and he did put it out there for us to use, uh, but I just felt it was proper to uh, get his permission since I was going to be documenting his tutorials and uh, in the processing of my images. So, um, you know, I just felt it was the right thing to do. And, you know, I contacted him, uh, got his permission, and, uh, you know, so here we go. Uh, as as I said, like Vortex Astronomy, uh, I'm probably butchering his name, but uh, Chiron Mercesia, or, yeah, I... I apologize, Chiron. It's uh, I'm not good with uh, some names. Anyways, uh, he put these tutorials together. Uh, I did a quick uh, run through uh, in on some data to get a feel for the way he does his uh, workflow here, and you know it, it was pretty good. So I I want to do this for you guys as well, and. You know, it, it's pretty easy to follow. It's somewhat step-by-step, -step, somewhat linear, um, but not 100%. So, for example, uh, you know, reducing the stars usually is done after you're in a non-linear state. And he's got the stretching linear to non-linear after reducing stars. Uh, so... You know, it's not a step-by-step -step, uh, by any means, but once uh, we go through this and you can see what we're doing, um, you can get a flow for it. I'd recommend going through, reading through all of these tutorials and getting a feel for what's what and then come up with your own workflow. Uh, that's what I did here, and uh, that's, you know, that's what I'm going to be doing is uh, I came up with a process that I think might work and we're going to test this live for the first time with an updated um, uh, workflow. So what I'd like to do with this episode is like I did with episode 22 is I want to go uh, process by process and create an individual chapter to be uploaded and then a compiled uh, full-length uh, episode at the end that will contain all the chapters. So right now, as you can see here, I'm currently recording the prelude, chapter zero, and we're going to be going through about 32 different chapters here. Uh, some of these are just rehashes of things like uh, blank in the subframe selector script, which we've talked about on numerous occasions. Not much has changed with that. And, he, you know, Kyron really doesn't uh, touch on those. Um, but a lot of these others will, you know, it, the information he presents is uh, was a lot better than the information I had before. And... Where appropriate, I'm also, as I'm going through these, for example, when I get to image calibration, I'm going to also uh, ensure that I read that section in Warren Keller's book uh, to make sure that I have both uh, pieces of information to present to you if there's anything that's, you know, if Warren Keller uh, differs from what Chiron uh, puts up, I'm going to try to bring both of them. Um, but Regardless, uh, for the most part, I'm going to try to adhere to Chiron's uh, workflow and uh, process. So, yeah, 
you know, for example, here we have the pure raw and camera sensor parameters. Uh, that is using a uh, specific script in PixInsight. Uh, very useful for those of us that are running DSLRs, which I am. Um, <clears throat> it, you know, that script allows you to input uh, bias flats and darts, and then it figures out the ADUs and the read uh, data uh, that are used in some of the later processes. Uh, so that's key because a lot of times we can't get that information for our DSLRs. Um, and it's also helpful if you do have a, a CCD or a CMOS that's a dedicated astro camera and there is published data and you just want to validate that the published data is right for your your camera so you know we'll be going through that one to kick it off and uh, the other thing I want to note here he does you know Chiron does have some things here for example combining monochrome RGB images so obviously some of these are narrow band specific and since I'm doing a DSLR based imaging you know, I won't be able to cover uh, some of the workflows that he has in here. So, you know, if you're running narrow band, most of what we're going to cover, you will be able to uh, follow along. But when it comes to uh, certain things, obviously, I'm not going to be able to uh, present that information. But with that, I'm going to conclude this intro. I want to say thanks for watching. I hope that you'll find this video series helpful and clear skies. See you in the next chapter. Have a good one.